everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. My name is Sarah. I'm the creator of educating.com and over the next couple weeks I am lucky enough to talk to you guys about a whole bunch of different types of animals. So this first week we're going to start with our mammals group and over the next couple weeks we're going to be talking about reptiles, amphibians, fish, invertebrates and birds so we're going to be covering a lot i'll try to be really really slow for you guys so you guys can get all the information down so like i said we're going to start with our mammals first there are about five thousand different types of animals that live today that we call mammals and they have a lot of stuff in common which we're going to talk about but they also are really different from one another they can be teeny tiny like a little mouse or they can be giant like an elephant and they can look different from one another too with their colors and their patterns. So you have an animal like a zebra that's got those black and white stripes and then you've got some mammals that might look kind of similar like a horse but a horse might just be brown. It doesn't have any stripes at all. Some are active during the daytime and some are active during the nighttime and they eat a whole bunch of different things too. So some of them are what we call a carnivore, meaning they eat a lot of meat. They like steak and chicken and all that kind of stuff like a wolf and some of them are herbivores, meaning that they like to eat plants. Like we like to eat salads and broccoli. I bet you guys really like your broccoli. Some animals really like vegetables, like a rhinoceros. Some people call the rhinoceros the lawnmower of the savanna because they just eat grass all day long. And it gets even weirder than that too. Some mammals, like you and I and lots of other ones, we spend our whole lives, for the most part, walking around on land. We use our legs and our arms. And some animals, they don't, some mammals, they don't have legs or arms at all. Like a whale is actually a mammal and instead of legs or arms, they actually have fins. And then you have some animals, some mammals, that even fly, like a bat. A lot of people think that bats are birds, but actually they're mammals. And we're gonna talk about why in just a second. All right, you guys, now that we have covered what makes mammals so different from one another, let's talk about what makes all of these weird animals part of the mammal grouping. So we kind of touched on it a little bit before when we were talking about the zebra stripes, but all mammals have fur or hair, depending on what animal you're talking about. So us, us people, I know a lot of times, some, sometimes we forget that people are animals too. We are actually a mammal. So if you guys reach up onto your head, you can feel some of that hair, or if you look down onto your arms, you might be able to see some of your hair. So since we're mammals, we have hair all over our bodies, and for us, it helps to keep us warm. It does a couple things, but for the most part, this thin layer of hair that we have kind of acts like a blanket to help keep us warm when it's a little bit chilly outside. But unlike us, and more like the zebra or a tiger, some animals use their fur or the colors and the patterns of their fur to act as a camouflage, to help them blend in with their environment, to make it harder for an animal that might want to eat them and turn them into lunch. It makes it easier for them to hide so they don't have to worry so much about becoming lunch. Some animals, some mammals, who don't use their fur for camouflage actually use it maybe to help them find themselves a mate or a girlfriend or a boyfriend. So there's this animal called the warty pig. It's a type of pig, but it looks a little bit different. It's got really long hair. And in the mating season, when they're trying to find a girlfriend, they actually, some of their hair falls out and they get a mohawk. And that's how they attract their girlfriends in the breeding season. Everybody loves a good mohawk. And some animals with their fur, it looks different depending on where on the body it is. So if we look at something like a porcupine, who you might think doesn't have any fur at all, well, you would be mistaken. All of the spines that cover porcupines are actually just a type of hair. They're really thick and they're obviously really pointy and porcupines use their fur for protection. But then you have an animal like a little otter who if you look at their rump, if you look at their back, 
They have really short hair that's really tight together and it helps them waterproof. They spend a lot of time in the water swimming around and if they got their fur all wet, it would be really heavy when they got out and tried to move around. So their waterproofing fur helps them stay nice and light and dry off really quickly. But if you look at the otter's face, they have whiskers just like your cat at home might have. But for otters, they're really helpful because they swim around underwater where it's kind of murky and it's a little dark and they might not be able to see exactly where they're going. So those whiskers that they have help them feel around the environment so that when they're moving around in the dark, they don't run into a wall or run into another otter. It kind of helps them move around in a nice, easy way. Not only do all mammals have fur or hair, but all mammals are also something we call warm-blooded, which means that even when we're out and it's really cold or it's really hot and we're at the beach and we're sweating, our body temperature always is the same. So if you guys reach down and you feel your arm, you might notice that you're warm, and that's because our bodies do that all by themselves. All mammals, they regulate or they control their own body temperature where if you were to compare it to a lizard or another type of reptile who are what we call cold-blooded, they can't do that. So if they're cold and they need to warm up, they actually have to go lay out in the sun on a rock and do something we call basking to make themselves nice and warm. Luckily, we don't have to do that or we would be laying in the middle of the road trying to get our body temperature up in the winter and that would just be crazy. So we all have fur or hair, we are all warm-blooded, and mammals, for the most part, they don't lay eggs. They all have live babies. So if you think of a bird who might make a nest in a tree and they lay their eggs, mammals, like I said, for the most part, we're gonna talk about a couple funny exceptions, they have live babies. We're born breathing and maybe not ready to go, but we're alive and we're ready to get started with our lives. There's no eggs unless you're a couple of the funny animals that live in Australia, like a platypus or an echidna. They actually lay eggs, but we still consider them mammals, but they are not the normal ones. So we generally try to think of mammals as having live babies, and when those live babies are born, it's not like a baby tiger can immediately go out and find themselves breakfast. They have to rely on their mom to feed them. So another really awesome thing that mammals do is they produce milk, moms do, when they have babies. And when the babies are born and they need nutrients, they need food, mom feeds them with the milk that she makes. So it's really helpful and it helps those babies get nice and strong before they go out and they take on the world. Okay, I hope you guys are feeling really confident about your mammal knowledge. We'll just do a quick review before we move on of the four things that mammals all have in common. So the first one was that all mammals have hair or fur. Remember, feel your head, look at your arms. We're mammals too. All mammals are also warm-blooded. We can control our body temperatures. Remember, we don't have to go lay out in the road to warm up. All mammals, remember, except for the platypus and the echidna, they all have live babies that are already alive when they're born. And lastly, all mammals, all mammal mommies, produce milk for their babies when they're born to help give them all the food that they need. So now I hope you guys are feeling really ready and you're excited to teach everybody you know about mammals. But before we wrap up today, I thought we could have a little special treat and we're going to talk about one mammal in particular that I know a lot of you guys are really going to enjoy. So I hope you guys are ready to learn all about the tiger. <laughs> 